We'll go ahead and get started here. Um, I will be your moderator, Leilani Evans. I am the Business Development Manager here at TAG, and um, I'll go ahead and just uh, give a quick introduction uh, to our presenter today, who is um, Darren Pierce. He presents today with over 20 years of experience with the Sage Timberline software platform, specifically excelling in Sage estimating. He's got a wealth of knowledge, a great understanding of the construction industries and our clients' needs and desires in the estimating technology world. Providing um, sales technology support at Sage North America for the construction and real estate division. Darren was also a business owner uh, in his previous life in the landscape industry for over 10 years. So he really thoroughly understands the needs of business owners and estimators. Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and um, introduce Darren. Go ahead and um, kick it off, and I will uh, start switching over to your uh, to your computer screen in a minute here. All right. Well, Leilani, thanks a lot for that, and uh, thank you all for joining in today's presentation. And uh, by the way, as a landscape construction guy in the Northwest up in Portland here, I gave it up after, uh, after about 12 years because uh, if you know the Northwest, it rains all the time. And I got tired of working in the rain. So <laughs> with that being said, though, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be jumping into the, the estimating solution, but not really going through the estimating application, but what happens downstream from the estimating solution and how can the back office benefit from what the pre-construction the estimators are doing and creating within the estimating application so with that being said Leilani I'm going to just do a check base and make sure my screen my monitor is being shown at this point yes we see it we our, see uh, all right. See lots of lots of fun colors there. And by the way, I like to use colors to designate the different categories, labor, material, so on and so forth. So, so looking at that, let's start from a, uh, from an estimating standpoint. When I'm looking at an estimate, uh, the estimators love the capability to transition information, see information in different ways, not just for them, but maybe for a customer if you're doing a presentation in front of them. So we have multiple layouts that we can change the details, the information that we have represented presented in here. Maybe all I want to see is the total when these change dates, what's the audit trail, uh, when did this actually hit the estimate, or when did it change within the estimate. So I've got that tracking capability and that information available to me. As you can see, we have many different uh, ways that we can look at the information, either individually or we have shared layouts as well. So if you have a, a fairly large department within your organization, you want to be able to share a layout, you most definitely can do that as well. Well, let's jump back into this presentation mode right here. The other thing is for an estimator to be able to break out the details in a manner that makes sense to the project. So in this case right here, what we're looking at is collapse all 16 division. If you're on the 48 division, good for you. We're slowly creeping, glacially creeping to everyone using the 48 divisional breakout. Uh, and I mean really slowly, actually. Uh, but when we look at that, maybe we want to see it in a different manner. Maybe we want to break it out by phase of project or by building or could be floor, system, you name it. You can break it out and flip that switch, flip that to that breakout in a manner that makes sense to you. Now, what's wonderful about this downstream is we can report on it in the same exact manner to whatever detail you want to go to. But let's go ahead and jump back over here to phase item because for the presentation today, what we want to do is we want to see it in a manner that makes sense to the back office, right? So we've been awarded this job. We're ready to move forward. Now what we have is the detail, the information of breaking that out for the cost code structure that we have, right? So we want to have this information flow into the system. So the thing that I always like to bring up and like you to think about is how much time does it take us to grab that information from the estimator and then input that into the system? Is it hours, two hours, 
Well, I, I got to 30 words per minute. That's the best I could do in typing. So when you look at that, it, it, it is multiple hours for me to enter this type of stuff. And if you look at that over 50 jobs, 100 jobs over a year, how many hours are we saving? So kind of an ROI look at that right there. Just to, to dig in a little bit deeper, just so you can see this, is we have the job cost tab. This is an item right here. And we can see that job cost code structure right there available for us. I will let you know in getting this set up, we do have a database editor that can help us do that very quickly, very easily to do. So, so as we jump to the advanced tab here, we've been awarded this job. We wanna send this over into Sage 100. So we've got a couple functionalities here. I'll just go through one of them. We've created a wizard that will walk you through the steps. So we don't even have to really do too much thinking here. How do we, you know, it's going to take us through the steps and take us to the conclusion of creating the budget. So I'll go to the next step. Up here, uh, of course, this is the uh, SQL database that we're working on. Here's my information. Here's the job number and here's the date of the transaction. I can go for, further into the, the process here where we around the accumulated item quantities if you'd like. Allocate the add-on. So really when we're looking at allocating those add-ons, do we want that to be part of the body of the estimate or do we want to break those, those markups separately? We can do that as well. Then we can, of course, have a, a, another way of sorting or di uh, slicing up that estimate downstream from here as well. So it could be a WBS code, so on and so forth. Give you a lot of capability, a lot of customization that can conform to your business. But I hit the finish, so on and so forth. So we'll jump over into Sage 100, but just keep in mind, we have proposal, budget, and change order capabilities. So we can utilize the historic pricing within our database and utilize that to push that information into the Sage 100. So when I look at uh, three, five here, and uh, typically I go to, go to um, six, two and, and uh, six, six, but in this case, we'll go to three, five and open up a central position for this particular guy right here. So now when we open up the budget, there it is. So we can have that information flow right into here and have it break it out the way that we want to. Now, this might not be as much detail as you go into. This is just for example purposes of presentation purposes. But, but uh, here we have all of the breakouts and the information, the detail that we need for that, that budget right there. Now, here's a little note that we say, okay, this came from the estimating system. So it kind of highlights that for us and we have that available to us. Then what we can also look at is uh, the proposal. Again, this is another way for us to break it out. I didn't make any changes to it, but you all probably have a, a format, a customized format that you've built that we can you know, draw this information into and have that proposal ready to go. And again, our, our nice little note there uh, telling us about that. And then last but not least, change orders. I've got a change order within the system here and I can double click and see that, that detail as well. So again, going back to the, the main point there is how long does it take us to type this information, this detail in and how much time is that going to be saving us? So, so when we look at that, there's a, there's a strong or ROI on the product. Changing gears a little bit, we have a new solution that's just come out just recently, and uh, it's called Buyout, and it does exactly what you would think it would do. It buys out the job, gives you the capability to send out requests for quotes to your suppliers, your subcontractors, your vendors, so on and so forth. We won't get into the, the details of this, but for today's, the purposes of today's pre presentation is looking at the integration point that we get from it. But I will give you at least a high level walkthrough. So when you're looking at this, we import a job and we determine the types, uh, the category types of information that we want to buy out. So if your labor pool, your self-performing, your labor pool uh, has been exhausted, I don't mean tired, you just don't have any available labor, then we might want to send that out to the street, see what we can do there. Or you may do that anyway within your normal process. Can they, the subcontractor do it cheaper than our self-perform labor? So, may happen. Well, in this point, we'll just say material and uh, subcontract. As that flows into the system here, 
Now we see all of those particular details, those items that we have. And what's interesting, if you can catch the, the I know we're a screen on the screen here, I believe is how we're doing this. So, so when we look at this, we've got yellowing right here and then we have white. That means it's automatically been grouped in a manner that makes sense to our uh, process. But we wanna maybe look at, buy out the job in a different way. As I mentioned, building, we might buy it out in building or we might wanna buy it out in unit format. However you buy out your jobs, because really to tell you the truth, is more a phased approach, right? Downstream from the estimate, we got a big project. We don't want a lot of materials laying out on site, getting stolen, broken, so on and so forth. Now, when I go back to group phase, I may want to just see labor or well, I didn't put any labor, right? Uh, or material. Now I want to drill down even further where I have woods and plastics. And let's just do a quick little thing here where we call it framing. And all I'm doing is grouping these items together. I'll copy this and I'll paste it just to get a feel for what we do next. Now you're seeing my framing as a quote. I don't have any vendors. All I do is right click and include vendors and uh, have them start vying for the opportunity to work with me or get the pricing, right? Suppliers. In this case, this automatically happened. And I, of course, put some dates in here. We track the dates and the high level variances of of what we're looking with the base number here. And then as we draw down further, we look at the details that break those up as well. Well, in this case, I'm gonna very quickly just select this contractor and go to commitment. Now, when we look at the commitment here, we'll, we'll put in a commitment number, we'll say 903, and we'll say, go ahead and create the commitments. So, the, you know, the thing when I look, look at the commitment there and I put in the number, we can have the system automatically, of course, count those commitments for us. So here's what we've sent over into the accounting system. Pretty much, boom, it just wrote directly to it. So now if we jump over into the, the, the 100 product here, and we can jump into that, that same job right there and look at purchase orders. As you can see, I've done it a few times. So we have that information and that detail that's going to be sent over as well. So again, you know, taking advantage of integrated solutions saves you a tremendous amount of time of uh, repeat, repeated typing, you know, dual entry, all of this fun stuff that we want to get away from there. And that doesn't even get into the power of what our estimating solution can do for you with a digital takeoff uh, integration with Navisworks if, if you're in the BIM world already. So there's lots to discuss there and uh, show off uh, the power of what that solution, but that's not the point of this presentation. We just wanted to hit the integration points. So with that being said, Leilani, I think uh, I'll go ahead and toss it back to you for any questions and finishing comments. Again, as Darren mentioned, um, if you would like a, a more tailored presentation of either estimating perhaps the accounting systems or um, digital takeoff, like you mentioned, any of those things, I'd be happy to facilitate a meeting uh, to review those a little bit more in detail. Uh, again, thank you. We hope to see you guys next week. Thanks, Darren.